we have with us today three insane casters, and that's Babel, myself, uh, that's just one guy by the way, as well as uh, <laughs> Luck and Abstract, that's correct. Yeah, let's get insane, babies! Yeah. Woo! Okay, well, don't tone it down, bro. We haven't even started it yet. But yeah. It's pinning up the hype before anything even starts. Yeah, I think we're gonna bring more of like a. Wait, wait, how should I put it? Like a more interactive stream today for the viewers. So hopefully you guys can enjoy it. Cool. Let's, let's do interactive. Uh, that works. Don't die, that's all. Don't die? Yeah. What do you mean by don't die? As in, uh, you know, just stay a little bit more focused. Anyway, game beginning here, so it's gonna be Orange versus uh, REQ, that's correct. Uh, air Quality actually got a new sponsor, though, so they are no longer called Rocket Air Quality. So gonna have to call them Air Quality, but previously in the last cycle they did very well, just to let you guys know there. And that said, uh, we do have Orange all the way on the Hellbound side and REQ on the Legion team. So, interesting to see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I haven't really um, seen REQ in action. So I'm very interest, interested to, to see how these guys are going to be uh, doing, but uh, I do believe they took like a couple of draws against one of the one of a, one of a few of the better teams in the GB currently. Like they took a match against Impunity Earth, I think MRR as well. They won against OHPC. They won against SPNV, but of course SPNV kind of like the new guys on the block haven't really done as well. And um, yeah, they're doing pretty good so far. So. Uh, we'll see how well they can match up against Orange Esports. I will oh, say yeah. that you have a pretty good memory. <laughs> I'm reading back it, bro. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, we're just gonna take a look at the banning phase right here. Uh, apparently, they are actually going through with the picking really, really fast. So let's just scan through the banning. We do have Keeper of the Forest, Ophelia, Pandemonium, and Tempest, which is um, nothing of a special at all except for Pandemonium. We don't really see Pandemonium being banned that much often. Yeah, that's right. So the Kung Fu Panda not gonna see in this game. A little bit sad to see. Want to see those fats just bounce really nicely. Yeah, I mean that the pandemonium. I think that. Oh my god, I think that's uh, one of like the the best hero on. Uh, who's it that played uh, Panda again? Kiddo, right? Yeah. Was it Kiddo? Was no, it it's Ankila actually. Ankila plays. Yeah, Ankila. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he, he. I think uh, he has quite good success with that hero. I mean, that hero is just so fun with the ability to just you know flurry people away and stuff like that. So it's a really sad to see that we won't see that here. Yeah. Well, we um, previously me and uh, Luck was kind of playing a uh, pandemonium with uh, Master of Arms, and it worked pretty oh, yeah. well. Mm -hmm. It worked pretty well until we had a uh, three retarded teammates. So um, that's something out of our control. Yeah. Very. But that very... happens every day, man. Just saying. Yeah. 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 So what happens when you don't have five? That's the yeah. thing. Q five ain't coming anytime soon. Even if you Q five, we still rich. Uh, you should call your teammates retarded. Uh, that's what I call abstract every day anyway. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> back to this game, <laughs> Orange oh versus God. REQ. Yeah, so the lineup actually pretty much completed from REQ side. It's gonna be the Kraken, Sandriff, and Pesty. A lot of good heroes there. Do not. There's a lot of lockdown as well. You have the Impale plus the Kraken ultimate. That's a lot. Sandriff is by far one of the most Soloist hero that can still gank, so he is always uh, he has that overwhelming presence in this game. That's it. Help on side, we got Fate Bubbles and Bushwhack, and I'm a little bit concerned here because there is not enough lockdown there. Uh, yeah, I guess that you could say there. Yeah, definitely, uh, in that kind of sense. Um, I'm not so sure what the next couple of picks are gonna be, but just looking at the way that they're banning out the pool right here, like Magnus, Parasite, Revenar, Glacius, Hag. They're just trying to get rid of all those mid heroes, jungle opportunities. Has uh, Keeper of the Forest, okay, yeah, Keeper of the Forest, very been addressed as well in the first panic stage. So, this really, really strong um, pick up, uh, pick up, sorry, strong heroes that are just gonna be banned. Out. Engineer, surprisingly fourth pick, man, guys, are we insane? How did that even happen? I have no clue. Like, uh, it's so weird, man, that uh, engineering it gets the pick. Gets picked out like fourth. On top, Master Virus. Oh, uh -huh. Babel, Babel. What? There we go. Oh. The dual uh. guns from Wild West. Pew pew. No, the, the main point is why the heck is that RNG Sports actually picked out more uh, Mermidon com um than Master of Arms. Uh, I mean like <clears throat> Wild Wilds of the West. Uh, wild wild, 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 wild guns of the West. I mean Master of Arms engineer. You both wielding those guns, of course. Master of Arms with the cooler <laughs> one. Uh, of course, it seems like he's in that uh. 
He's gonna use that <laughs> bow avatar, which is really very, very uh, unfortunate. I want to see cybernetics, coolest thing ever, guys. Hello. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. I still don't really understand why Myrmidon out of all out of all things. But hey, at least Myrmidon have like two lockdowns. Not entirely lockdown, but Whitfield is quite um okay. Uh, you miss Whitfield quite a um quite pretty easily and um. Magikarp can be sidestepped really, really easily as well. So that's one thing I don't really like about Myrmidon. Your uh, your stunts aren't very reliable. Yeah, I mean, if you if you stay still when he throws out the you know the Magikarp, he just like uh, misses that, and then if the weed field misses, you're also gonna miss that as well. Is uh, like there are so many things that can uh, be avoided out of this Myrmidon that it's just not really that strong of a pickup. I actually saw uh, me and I think. It was me and Babel that saw, I want to say it was AMQ that pulled the Myrmidon strategy. Mm -hmm. and can you stop having such a good memory? <laughs> Sorry bro, I can help it. Too good. But yeah, I mean, the AMQ. thing is like, Myrmidon is just one of those heroes you can't really uh, land. A, it's not a secure stun. You have to hit it really well if you want to be able to. And there's like still a lot of support in the club's president decided to take those like Pyromancer. Was the Luna but okay, a Luna is man as Pyromancer, so that's there for them to pick up. Glacius was also banned by the way, and that was banned out by Mr. Ghost himself, who is I think the only guy that really loves playing Glacius. Yep, that's right. So Glacius is ultimately going to be the kind of hero that will be on there. However, this game being Myrmidon, it's a little bit different and that's it. Now gonna use this opportunity to use both teams as well as player. We have RNG spots all the way from Hellbond as well as REQ on Legion side. There's a Pestilence and that's gonna be Oh my god, how the hell do you pronounce this? Black Lane. Black Babe! And that's a B? Like No, yeah, yeah, it's a B. It's a black babe. It's black babe. Oh, never mind. Black there. Yeah. Uh, Blackie, my good friend, is gonna be the pestilence. Um, Tidy Maru gonna be your uh, well, that would be a Kraken. Afe Ray is gonna be your engineer, and Munity is gonna be your uh, well, that is MOA. <laughs> Las Manalis is gonna be Null to say sell to Y. Anyway, just gonna call it Null. Now it's gonna be your center. And that's it from Hell on side. We have Mr. Ghost Top and that would be your Myrmidon. Kiddo onto the bubbles, WTF on the bushwhack, and we do have also Cipher, previously known as Ankle. He's gonna be the Swift Blade, Fate being played by Shui as usual. So that is gonna be a roaming uh, secondary support, Shui, and I'm gonna be expecting a lot of extra, well, engagement potential coming from Team Orange. Uh, yeah. It's been really long since I've seen Shuyu actually playing as a NC hero. It's been really, really long. Like, I wanna see him play Ophelia again, or even Tempest. Yeah, I miss the Tempest as well. Like, we always see him now being played the dual, dual support role, and that's mainly because of the way the meta game is shifting in Southeast Asia. They really, really love their dual supports, but I still feel there is a lot of presence if you go for a jungle hero, because that allows you to go for better heroes and, you know, just get that whole wombo combo up and going, you know. And I, I always disagree with the item pickups from Shuei, but for some reason, he always finds a space to make it work, though. Yeah, he does, and it is, in, it is in fact a little bit interesting from Hellbound side because there's a lot of ganking potential in this kind of a lineup. There is a lack of stunners though. Only the Fate as well as Myrmidon has got considerable amount of stunners. You can also <laughs> say that there is the cup field on the bubbles, but the bubbles is actually going to have to expand his ultimate for that, and that has got sizable amount of cooldown, so it's not recyclable. That's a little bit sad to see. Um, and in general, there's a lot of early game aggression from Orange, but the biggest question so far is can they pull it off here against RQ, a team that is pretty much well known in terms of defense. Uh, as well as a little bit more on the team play, huge uh, wombo combo there. You have a Kraken Audi plus the engineer combo, so those are things that you're gonna have to be really wary of. One thing that um, I hope to see is, well, technically Swift Blade to be very, very active in terms of ganking and everything else, but, well, Blade Frenzy does a lot of damage, so I don't think that you would really want to discard that uh, the advantage that Swift Blade uh, have early in the game, because, well, he is a carry, and if he have Blade Frenzy in this early start and be able to snow or somewhat snowball from that point on, you are technically going to do very, very well in, the, uh, in terms of farming from that point on. So, if he's going to be laning together with uh, Myrmidon, He's gonna have to make things work right, like really, really right, or else it wouldn't really go well. Yeah, yes, and yeah, that's right. So that's it. It seems like all five members from the Hellbond already in the Legion jungle have planted one ward of sight there, so that is gonna block out the pool camp. 
Whoa. Right, I, I'm just uh, responding so to a couple of chat and there I see there seems to be a lot of people that want to watch Imperial Storm. We're so sorry that we aren't covering them as you have to understand. We need to show a lot of these other teams as well because we can't give all the attention to Imperial Storm. We will probably just cover them tomorrow I think. So don't worry about don't worry too much about that. You can always check them out tomorrow but Please, we do love it if you, you have your support and, you know, stick through this game. Anyways, middle lane though, uh, Kegstar does miss there on that bubbles. I think Kiddo, we all know that he, we all know his bubbles play very well. I think he's probably going to get Annihilation in this game. What do you guys think? Kiddo in this game, Annihilation. He did it before in a separate game, but I'd say that this game is going to be pretty hard because REQ is a formidable opponent for them. Uh, I'm not saying REQ is... Definitely uh, a threat that uh, Orange needs to view it upon as too seriously, but I'll say that REQ is pretty decent, one of the better teams as in the top 8 teams in Southeast Asia, so they need to at least play decently well to be able to reach that kind of standard, and I'm hoping the Orange Esports will be able to react to that in time. What about you, Abs? Mm, to be honest, um, well, I can kind of kind of uh, refer to what uh, what Babel say but well I don't it's been pretty long since I've seen RQ even play so it's quite difficult to really answer the question though but I was to say if he's able to get annihilation then why not yep I'm pretty sure we all love to see that as we are finally gonna be in a pause yay hooray features for pauses as usual I'm um, just taking a look at the warding by the way air has just actually warded up the I think this is kind of like the NC area over here. The hard camp coming up from this uh, Hellborn uh, jungle. And I think that's just to spot out any ganks coming and harpening. But mm -hmm. they didn't really think that uh, it would be as just a straight up fade in the lane with this bushwhack. So I think they didn't see that coming. As for middle lane, like a lot of these lanes are pretty alright. It kind of looks like a, a TMM game coming up from Orange Esports right now. Like Myrmidon, Swiftblade bot. <laughs> no, uh, not that you said it. Yeah, bubbles min. You have like, you know, it's like the two one two kind of laning. I yeah, kind of pretty, much, pretty much conventional, if you ask me. But so far, I'm saying that um, Kraken is not gonna have the best of lane against the Mobidon. The Whitfield actually connect quickly, and Kraken now would have to use the tsunami charge to, to be safe. And that means that he doesn't have much mana to work with for the next few uh, moments into this laning phase. But I hope that he is gonna be okay. That's a top lane again. And now the stun coming out, and Sandrift with the sandy ground there is trying to make something happen. There's a nice keg and fade. Shrey might actually feed the Bloodlust here, and he is going down. But a little bit of a nice trade. MOA is gonna take the fall as well. WTF, gonna get poked by Toothpick as usual. Hmm, that was a little bit interesting, but uh, he is gonna take a little bit of an orthodox uh, route to run away. The Keg is gonna connect, and that is gonna be really low health point. Is that, does it curse? No, there's no mana for that, so here comes the Fate. <laughs> here comes the Pain! But yeah, Fate is probably gonna throw his stun out just to throw him a I think. Maybe, today? Uh, no? No, not okay. interested. Uh, Sanrif is not, not a hunky guy, so... All, I think all he wants is a handsome, handsome hunky dude there. But anyway, not gonna be the Sand Reef. Not even interested in the MOA. That's a bearded old guy anyway. God, how dare you say he's a bearded old guy? Sand Reef yeah, is awesome. Yeah, he's awesome, but not I'm the so, old uh, guy. Yeah, I'm actually uh, disappointed that he didn't use the uh, Hang Tua avatar. That's so good. Bottom lane, by the way, there was some action over there. Uh, Myr Myrmidon threw out the wheat field, it actually connected with Kraken, and I actually thought he was gonna die. And I actually said a lot of actuallys over there, so yeah. Yep, and it seems like 3 minutes in, 1 is to 1 so far, and the Kek is gonna connect or not because of the quick take cover on Kiddo there. So Kiddo is doing a lot of work in the mid lane, but still he's only level 4 against level 4 Pesty, and it is pretty much a split in between kind of situation to cover again and at its very best. So this is Kiddo's moments where he show you how he just avoid damage coming his way and making sure that at least he has got an extra level going to the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, people screwed up overlays again. Oh, top lane though. No, already That's changed, bro. It's just a little bit late. But anyway, oh, yep, there we go. Top lane, uh, MOE going down quickly, and Fate might actually be a little bit nope. of trouble. But now Sandrif is. Oh, the Whitfield, they need to make it a little bit longer there. Yeah, it's just a little bit short. It's, kind of, it's funny to see, like, a Myrmidon's gonna throw out weed fields. Bushwhack is just gonna pick up the weed and start smoking it because that's what he does every day. So you see that long pipe that he's holding right there? Yeah, that's oh, a that's, that's a specialized bong right there. <laughs> Wait, what? Specialized bomb. <laughs> bong. It's a bong. Sorry, oh, my oh, bad. Oh, bong. bong. I see. Okay, bong. I get it. Bushwhack with his bong. Really drunk bong. right now. But anyway, 
They are the in the top lane, and there goes the fade. Uh, stun onto the MOA. MOA looking run away, but with the bong, it's gonna be a kill. Yep. G W. Oh. Yep, and, and at the Imagine same time, like. Uh, we through the bong every single moment while they're fighting. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, as Abs pointed out, look at this, man. Mermaid and Engineer just going at it, and uh, Mer I don't think Engineer's gonna be able to reward this. <laughs> Mermaid is actually just boxing him out. I think Mermaid is gonna probably wait for Career, or even drop the ward himself. No, nope, maybe not. So I don't maybe think he not. saw that. So I think Engineer is definitely gonna be able to counter ward this uh, ward of sight being placed by Mr. Ghost. Now we have got quite a lot of things that's really going on right now. Engineer finally had the chance to do what, and in comes a Myrmidon. He's gonna put up the steam turret to stop a Myrmidon on his boots, and of course, very nice side step by Engineer, but a cap is gonna be used. And in the end, Engineer goes down to WTF with his bong. So, getting the fourth kill is pretty good for WTF. It's just early in the game right now. Yeah, and yeah. they actually uh, spent a lot of resources over there. They used to kill fill all their resources. There was like three heroes converging on him just to kill him. But I mean, a kill is a kill nonetheless. They are four kills ahead. Oh, sorry, three kills ahead, my bad. Uh, I can do maths. Um, and yeah, I mean, Swiftly is not having the best time though. Kraken is probably the biggest thing that's going in the way for our Legion team right now. Ching ching! Yeah. And that's it so far, 4 to 1, and I'm a little bit concerned now for Team Legion because WTF already about 400 GPM close thereabouts. Uh, he is only level 5, but look at that, 6 minutes in and already 4 kills. Oh, I know, it doesn't even seem like he needs to farm a lot. A CS only about 24 is to 6, is not the top so far, but it seems like he has got the extra uh, goal from the kill, and that is very nice to see. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Kraken is going to do a little bit of a man show against the fate that the Kek is going to miss miserably, so... Um, it's the effect of the bong, it does have a lingering effect on you, so having been killed at the top lane, I do believe the engineer is not gonna have the best of the game so far. A little bit drunk there, but there is no stun coming in. Maybe the burning shadow is gonna be used here, and FBA Ray is gonna say goodbye, guys. I'm out. Yeah, do you see the amount of taunts on him? That Chipral, the dumpster, and the rainbow taunt. Holy crap, that's insane. Middle lane, though, best of it. Running away use. from Kelpfield. Yep, and just and... go, another weak build. And just everywhere about and so oh, pestilence will go down from all the process. And of course, Matt tries to run away from the swift blade, but the blade frenzy proves to be a little bit too painful for them and aim back onto Sand Rave. Gonna be destroyed by WTF after the wheat field just pops up and technically Orange G Spot is doing a pretty good of a time. It's currently seven minutes in and they've got eight kills already. Oh <laughs> wow. Yep, eight hey. kills, man. It's really good. Yeah, that's the bong doing the work there, man. Let me just tell you that it's all it's all about the bong. <laughs> Bushwhack there, 5 0 and 0, already 400 GPM into this game, and this should be a pretty quick one. Just saying. Yeah, it seems like a, like Bushwhack's on the rise right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw who was it, Impunity Earth playing with him. Uh, I think Lucky was playing it, and he had, he was got really really lucky with like all his side steps and stuff like that, uh, and that was during. It's just kill. MSHC, I think, and. Uh, it was pretty insane, like he was juking through the trees and you know, kiting, in, uh, kiting uh, the enemy team down and auto-attacking them to death because of that jungle toxin, it's such a good skill. And uh, again, I, like I mentioned before, I do believe Stay Green did kind of run Bushwhack in a scrim against Reason Gaming and they did pretty damn well, like Chessy was like 990. Kraken! Those fat meats is gonna be mid Takoyaki soon, and there we go, <laughs> down south, going down quickly. Uh, he, does, he does take a little bit of a, uh, a time to try and pick up WTF, but Bushra improving himself to be a little bit too tanky there, and definitely with the extra farm. He has already one Soul Scream Ring, plus I do believe one Pretenders Crown there in the previous two engagement, so that would be pretty good. Now two, yes, but previously one, so that was why wow. he was a little bit too tanky and did survive the engagement there. It's good, top lane. A little bit of a gang in action here, so all three members gonna try and rape this sand, uh, sorry, this Swift lane. Is it gonna be possible that is up? Remains to be seen, man. I don't think that it will work out for the Legion at all. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, like, Swift Blade, he has Blade Frenzy. As well as Swift Slashes, anything can just Blade Frenzy away. And technically, Master of Arms uh, is up on sleeve and uh, over uh, of a charge shot, and even Engineer's Kang and everything else wouldn't be able to hit uh, Swift Blade if he uses Blade Frenzy on time. So, yeah, it's not gonna be easy. Exactly, that's yep, the, they're in position yeah. now. There goes the overcharge shot, or so we thought. There we go. The creep's actually gonna spot him up quickly. So, Suplay playing really safe now. And Clint knows what the hell is happening here. It's gonna be a tri lane against him, and he's already level 7, so that's good. And if you ask me if the whole gang fills, it's always because the sand rave. You know, as compared to a gun, you really have got a very small little knife there, and it. I don't think that does work. By the way, I just realized something regarding 
Uh, oh, hold on a second. Just gonna hold it top for a little bit. Oh, Kex is gonna miss the bottom lane, unfortunately. And there will be a two against three. Possibly a two against three. And there goes the sidestep. But not enough to put out a crippling dart onto Kraken as he was able to use Tsunami Charge against himself away from all the danger. And actually, I have no idea what's gonna happen from uh, at the bottom lane. It's like in and out, in and out anytime soon and it's yeah, just very The dual guns from Wall West is on my sleeve and even the Sand Rift is being called in here but I would say the Sand Rift is not able to do much really. oh, but wow. a nice two man stun though and here comes Mimidon nice fall out the wit is gonna connect oh! on MOA so MOA is going down Kraken big ultimate he does show his nice little Takoyaki legs there and he is also gonna fall <laughs> down quickly that being said Bubbles is being called into the fray here Vashui with the kill as well as Mr. Ghost there so it's all the support that is picking up the kill and that's interesting to see however all five members or rather four now is still at the bottom lane and that is going to be ongoing there there you go switch slashes just cutting down the sand rave like it's a piece of tofu so that's really good to see and oh, takoyaki. that's that's the kraken bro uh, fine yeah how, how is how is sand rave a tofu though wouldn't he be made into sand rather than tofu yeah but bro he do you know kinetic, know kinetic sand what? kinetic sand that that thing okay is okay it's, it's, it's all right uh, all I know is that he just died in less than two seconds. That's that's how yeah. Tofu died. Anyway, yep. uh, Pesty now mid lane against Kido. Kido is gonna oh! be tagged nicely, but the uh, Impale is going out. Schedule oh! was Pesty. Let's live is just solo oh and manning God. it up. Redefining your is too flag. damn high. Yeah, can, can I just say that Pestilence turned into Kido right there with that RNG proc uh, from the Gore? That was insane. That is, that is just really bad. Uh, by the way, Gore, there's a little bit of a problem with the tooltip. It does proc at about 100%. Um, 25 is a, it's just a red herring, so just don't fall for that anymore, okay? It's, it's 120% now. Yeah, sure, sure. Only if it's in Kiddo's hands, though. But yeah, bottom lane, though, uh, Bushwacky does finish this Energizer, so it's going to be even that much more mobile. And I think he's going to die again here. Fades in the vicinity. He's level 6, and Reflection's up in five se 4 seconds. Does anyone actually pay attention to the fact that WTF has already changed lane with the uh, Ankylon? That would be the Swift Blade. So it seems like they are playing a little bit of a dual carry into this kind of situation. And it's pretty good to see that Bushwhack having set amount of success at the top lane is now going to come down south here to try and address the southern problem. And that would be the Kraken. And here comes Invisible Fate from behind. And it could be a little bit of a good kill there. The Burning Shadow on schedule as well. And Kraken again is going down. That's a Sandriff looking to come to advantage his teammate. Is it going to be enough? I think Fate is going to be miserably uh, running, trying to run away. But... The quick bong effect coming in and knocking on the sand refuge is just completely zoning out there and saying, like, oh, and die. <laughs> I can't catch up. No, what's happening? Oh, Burning Shadow, and it seems like Bong is going down again onto Engineer. And Engineer, oh my god, he is going to be smoking weed through the pipe of the bushwhack, and he will be taken care of completely. He was a stoning there and saying, oh, this is so good, guys. Yeah, I mean, like, the I first thing that this. happened was he took a whiff of the of the, you know, the drugs and bushwhacks uh, bong and then he took a couple of natural weed from Myrmidon I mean, that you, but you're not gonna do anything after that Holy <laughs> crap, did you just... Yeah, yeah he did. Just... And, and the thing is that it was just weed overdose there uh, Meanwhile, top lane uh, Nice to see that Enkla will, will be able to pick up the tower as well as slice a little bit of Takayaki up for himself but the, the big fat Kraken just charges him all the way to the end of the wall there and it seems like Ankyla is going to be a little bit of a tight spot there but he's just running so quickly with really slim legs this is why you should really just train up and having fat legs doesn't really work out in this kind of a game here but you can also take the short card and try to make something happen and also try and charge at him but he can definitely spin away and there is still no backup and he's screaming where the hell is my team and here comes Kido but it's a little bit too late and Super Blade is going to pay the price though the uh, Kalfu is going on as scheduled but Kraken is going to be silenced and he will also pay the price so that is good to see however the Keg is going to miss and that's going to be again okay but down top it seems like a lot of Suns are going to sit down so <laughs> Yep. Okay, <laughs> getting back Get into the middle of is just gonna try to run away from the shell stuff and he pop bubbles pop to the shell stuff and beautiful cake is gonna be used on the fate and he's Yeah, that's all. And and, and all the <laughs> stuff. A lot of sun's gonna sit down. <laughs> that Not was like four that. times a damn row. Sit down, son. Oh, yes, yes, Dad, I hear you. I'm set I've sat down already the first time you tell me to. Please don't repeat yourself. This is why you're old and no one listens to you. That's why mom left by the way, just saying. Oh my god, what? <laughs> Beagle, no, what? just kidding. Anyway, this game trades the 17 year RG spots on a roll, man. And I would say that close to 14 minutes into this game, there is virtually nothing that can stop WTF. He hasn't died yet. 7 0 and 4. And Shoyu is going to be really kind to show us the rules. Um, 
Game one, game two, uh, blah blah blah. Yeah. By the way, it's all Southeast Asian server, etc. etc. Uh, can't really read in that format. Ah, uh, forget it. I can't read. So that's it. And it seems like uh, game is still going on a schedule. A little bit of a latency problem for REQ site, I think. Yeah, it's just really sad to see that because I think they can probably perform better than this. They're actually getting really steamrolled right now by Orange Esports. Like, Orange Esports is running a <coughs> sorry a really weird lineup with like. Oh, middle lane. Uh, Pesla's actually gonna get it going on. Aqua's a refill, the magic card. Here comes the shell serve and the silence. Whoa, Pesla's still surviving? Hello? Okay, he's gonna go down to A from the auto attacks of that uh, bubbles and this Myrmidon. So. Actually, he thought he was gonna survive. Uh, I mean, he was survive. But yeah, bottom lane though. Bushwhack gonna use that invisibility rune. Probably gonna scout out Kraken. The yeah, rest of his backup is probably coming soon. Like, Fade's running over, but he has that swarm effect on him. Does Kraken think... not know that he's getting blocked by Bushwhack? <laughs> okay, now he knows. And here comes the fade, the burning shadow going out there, but it seems like Kraken is still going to be under the effect of the burning shadow. That's completely OP. It's like trying to catch a Russian bullet train there. So you're doing a really good job. Legendary streak already, and I mean, so far in 13, uh, sorry, 3 is to 19. I call it 13 there, sorry. But 3 is to 19, and RAQ, man, falling short of our expectations for today. Yeah, very much so. Uh, fade, by the way, I think they know that fade's here. Oh, okay, maybe they don't. Uh, I do believe Fate actually ran over the Word, Word of Revelation. And, uh, he's probably gonna go for Master of Arms here. He has enough for his son. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and here comes the Flying Girl. It's gonna be a kill also. <laughs> Both of them is gonna be going down quickly. And, well, there we go. Th uh, it's the mascot of Thunder Masters, but Kido doing a really good job in this particular game. It is interesting to see that as well. And WTF taking up the challenge to tell the Legion team to host on SG server. It doesn't really matter to them because that is going to be okay as well. That said, uh, I would say that definitely Hellbound team is doing a lot of group work so far. 7 0 and 5 on WTF. He still hasn't died. And I would love to see him die today. What? Whoa, that's kind of. Oh, that's me. No, you want to see you? Die? Not the player, the. the yeah, I know, right. I know. I'm okay, just, I'm just but... pulling your leg. Uh, but yeah, again, Fade going for the really unconventional build of a Striders and Helm of Black Legion. So he's going to be fairly tanky himself. Danry Man has no items, only sitting on Steam Boots and that Ring of the Teacher. Only at about 197, 200 gold per minute. So really not having the best farm at all in this game. And like, you have so many carries. So here we go. Here comes Engineer with the keg. It's actually going to cut in with Myrmidon. Is Sandriff going to be able to kill this guy? Force Evolution comes out. Alcum's the weak field. He's okay. Hit. Alcum's two slashes and the late frenzy. Holy shit. This swiftly doing a lot of work. And I think Massive Arms is probably going to die here. That auto attack, man. So much damage onto him. Uh, Engineer you know why might actually MOA died? Uh. Yeah, he died because of the swift flashes. No, uh, he not didn't. The swift he yeah. died because he wasn't using using the master of cybernetics. If he had them laser guns. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. Guys if he had them the laser guns. But anyway, ping 500 coming from RQ. That's the main reason. But anyway, game's done already, and Orange gonna win this one. That was really quick, guys. It's even faster to take a shower. But <laughs> what? Seriously? You took that long to take a shower? Like, seriously? What? Yeah, it's probably a really seriously? bad analogy there. But not anyway. your damn girl. No, I mean. Oh, uh, can't get away now, Babel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can't get away now, Babel. Yes, guys, I shout for more than 30 minutes, okay? Uh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever it is that you say, guys, it's gonna be good. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy that. And a little bit of analysis by Lark now, please. Yeah, so that game went completely in favor of Orange Street Sports, even though they had the really weird lineup of like just so many carries. Like, they had the uh, the WTF on the Bushwhack as well as Swift Blade on that. Uh, Swift Blade on that Cipher. I mean, N Kindler on that Swift Blade, who was uh, actually getting quite a lot done. They both were, in fact, three out of the members from RNG Sports was practically sitting at 400 GPM or over 400 GPM. So that's pretty insane. I mean, the game is just completely nowhere close to uh, what is the name again? Uh, Rex. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't do anything. Like they had Wild Wild West guns, couldn't do much because of the rotation. Pestilence didn't get anything. They went for a off was it by the way Kraken was off lane right yeah <laughs> yeah he was yeah, yeah uh, he, was. he was off lane and he tried his best he was actually like one of the factors that was getting them back into the game and then if it, unfortunately orange Esports just saw that happening rotated bot they swapped lanes you saw wtf go bottom with the help of i think it was the fade first and then after that was mr goes on the uh myrmidon and just couldn't do anything after that that is correct, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that series there. Game 2 is going to be well underway soon. And going to wait for the invite. That's it. This is Babel. Joining me today is my two insane and bonged out casters. Uh, it's going to be Lark as well as Abstract. Hope you guys enjoyed that cast. We'll be back with Game 2 as I mentioned before. So stay tuned and see ya.